Thanks for the intro, Brendan. Yeah. And thank you for that. Um, and great intro, by the way. I like the DeLorean <laughs> and Back to the Future uh, yeah. intro. So, a lot of people do. There's those that <laughs> either love it or those who hate it. And so, I was a fan. <laughs> and we like them both. So, yeah, it's perfect. Um, John Denza, I'm the Chief Commercial Officer for ErisX. Um, everything that falls under my responsibilities includes sales, account management, business development, creating new product. Um, I've been with the firm just under three years myself. Um, and prior to my time here at Arisex, um, my roles have been with different exchanges and capital markets. I started my career 20, almost a little over 20 years ago at Island ECN, working in sales, um, basically promoting the ATS at the time for equity transactions. And then I've also spent time at, uh, Instanet and then NASDAQ. And then, uh, before I joined Arisex, I uh, was with BATS and CBOE promoting uh, equities and fut- um, equities and options, I should say. And then I would say it, probably five, six years ago, I started looking into crypto and investing into crypto and just kind of fell down the rabbit hole. And I was fortunate to find ErisX and uh, we're focused on uh, spot and futures uh, for cryptocurrencies. All right, let's dig in. All so right. kind of walk you through quick history of ErisX. So, company was founded 10 years ago and the original investors had come up with an interest rate swap futures product. And with futures in the US, you need to work with the designated contract market, which is a, an application you have to file with the CFTC, which allows you to operate a futures exchange. But to be able to execute and clear the futures transactions are two different things. So you actually need to have a DCO, a derivative clearing organization, to be able to clear the futures trades. Well, this is rather, it was set up rather inefficiently because Erisex was executing these futures trades but they were using the CME because they held the DCO to clear the futures transactions. Fast forward, they end up licensing the IP to the CME, and then they're left holding this um, futures exchange medallion. And the original investors, um, some of them like Cumberland and um, CTC and some others, they had already been trading crypto, and they, they recognized the fact that for the space to evolve and there for the, to be maturity, there would need to be regulation and compliance um, to be able to handle that. So what they did was they first built out this great cap table. Cap table, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a second, is with industry people um, that represent miners, um, professional traders, market makers, exchange, and retail. They brought the cap table together. April 2019, we actually launched our uh, spot, trans, uh, spot market. And then uh, a couple months later, we actually got approved by the uh, CFTC to operate, uh, or I should say, clear futures transactions. So we actually got uh, approved for our DCO. That's really a unique position that that puts us in because if you're a trader and you're looking to trade spot, you're going to look at in maybe an Erisex, a crack in a Gemini, or a Coinbase. If you want to trade futures, you're going to look at, let's say, uh, a BACT, which is physically settled, or a CME, which is cash settled. We're actually unique in the sense that we actually marry both of them. So we have spot trading on the platform and futures trading on the platform. And then to take it a step further, at the end of 2020, um, I should say beginning in September, October, we actually started working on our margin application with the CFTC. It's been submitted um, since, I would say, December 2020. And I mean, this is a huge undertaking. You're looking at 70 plus policies and procedures, 3,000 pages in the rule filing, and the regulator basically said, you know, we, we wanted to almost look at doing it piecemeal and getting their opinion. They were like, no, submit the whole application and we'll do a review. And since that time over the last nine, 10 months, there's been a constant dialogue with the regulator. So with that being said, in December of 2019, we launched our own proprietary matching engine technology. We put up our first physically settled futures trade. And then we proceeded to over the last year and a half, go after all the money transmitter licenses including the U.S. territories and the New York bit license, uh, we've got 51 of them. And I would say since we got approved from the New York bit license, over the last, I'd say, 18 months or so, maybe only one or two other firms have actually been approved for that bit license. And we were also the first uh, exchange to be approved for the ETH futures, which uh, the CME piggybacked on and took advantage of our, our, our approval on. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to scroll ahead here. So where do we define ourselves in this space? You know, I'm an early trader of crypto. I've been trading crypto for five or six years. I remember going to Binance. I remember going to some of these foreign exchanges, not feeling too comfortable that what could happen and, and there's this void. And there was this, we like to call crypto 1.0, 1.0 where 
You're trading at these offshore unregulated exchanges, but for us to take it to the next level, it's about these margin products. It's about creating derivatives and ETFs, which we're seeing with Fidelity creating or, or launching or you know filing, I should say, their own uh, ETF. You know ourselves going out and getting the DCO. We see the, the the growth in the futures products, and that's kind of where our approach has been. We think that for the adoption and the maturity to take place, you're going to look at these more um, advanced products and greater adoption through maybe ETFs through uh, equities. This is a, a reflection of the cap table, which is a great cap table we, we built out. It's got firms like Susquehanna and Virtu, which is a publicly traded prop firm, uh, Bitmain, largest miner uh, you know, in the world, DCG, the, the creator of the G GBTC, and also their trading desk, Pantera, um, CBOE, CME, and NASDAQ. But the piece that, you know, based on my previous experience, the piece that really got me excited was knowing that Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, and TradeStation were also investing. Because it really is important to build out a great ecosystem. You don't want SIG and Virtu trading with each other all day. You want retail participation because those participants are actually going to drive uh, price improvement and great execution quality. These are the coins. They're limited right now um, to Bitcoin, Ether, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and USDC. We actually have about 12 coins that are teed up for um, listing over Q4. But it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier in the conversation about Gensler and how he's been very vocal about his approach and, and how he's looking at the space. And it's actually forced us to slightly pause and pump the brakes for a second just to see how the regulator is going to kind of let the dust settle. I mean, as of right now, Avi and Link are ready to go. And like I said, there's several others right behind it. Okay. So um, we'll get to that later. Go ahead. Okay. Continue. Go ahead and continue. Sure. So, you know, we've talked about the high onboarding and operating standards. We, we take regulation very seriously, KYC, AML. Uh, we've got the DCO, the DC, DCM. 51 money transmitters throughout the, the U.S., including the New York bit license. I mentioned earlier that our exchange rule filing for spot and futures are both with the CFTC. It's just a recap on this slide. Just another recap too, 24-7 uh, trading on the exchange. Also, you know, I talked about how you can actually get somebody on the phone. Our market operations people are available 24-7. And if there's a problem or trading issue or a question you have about using the trading front end, they'll be able to answer the phone 24-7. Jump ahead here. I just wanted to give like an example or kind of a view or lens into where Arisex falls into you know the other uh, venues or um, broker dealers or trading platforms. You know we we kind of straddle retail institutional where you look at retail like a trade station or Robinhood, they're pure retail, and retail direct like a Bitstamp or Gemini and so forth and FTX US. Regulatory overview, I've already touched on, just another slide to, to ex example. We've also gotten approved by our, for our SOC 2 Type 2, so we take uh, security very seriously at Arisex. Okay. I'm very familiar with the SOC 2 compliancy. Rocket mm -hmm. Dollar's got it as well. It's, it's okay. Uh, Quite an undertaking for the team. <laughs> it, it really is, yeah. It's a, it's a big deal. People don't understand. That's where we have a community node that's being about to be hosted uh, for Pulse on a SOC 2 compliant uh, yeah, I would say center. we must have spent three or four months prepping for it, and mm -hmm. then when the review happened, it ha it took another three months as well. Um, just an, a map of all the states that are covered. Virginia has just been slow um, to approve the application. It's more of a manual process with that state, so that's the only one that's pending right now. And, okay. and then great for customers, John. I know just I always hear from people from New York or Washington, and now for some other exchanges, it's like five, six other states. What I really love is I, I don't need to worry where someone is. Virginia, they're working on, obviously, but Aerosex can serve them. I have see yep. so many New York customers left out from other exchanges. Yep. So, so Freddie quote, sorry, brother, you're going to have to wait for this. <laughs> so uh, the next next slides are just kind of giving an example of what you would expect once you become onboarded at Aerosex. Once you've gone through the KYC AML process, you get access to our exchange member portal. The member portal is pretty straightforward, shows you your positions um, and transactions. If you need to get a statement downloaded, you can do that. And then we offer two ways for the participant or the member to trade on Aerosex. One is the quick trade widget, 
So in this example, you know, maybe I don't want to look at the complicated front end trading UI. I want something quick and easy. Um, with this, you put in a thousand dollars. It tells you how much BTC you would purchase. You hit buy, boom, yeah, you acquire the uh, that amount of BTC. In this scenario, it would have been you know point oh one seven eight based on what it was trading at the time. It's also available on mobile. It's easy. We don't have an app, unfortunately, but it's sized perfectly to an iPhone or a Droid. Okay. And this is actually the full-blown trading UI. Instead of looking at this slide, I'm going to jump over to looking at it real time. So this is actually our market for Bitcoin in real time. Uh, these are live bids and offers. Ooh, look on the at book. that trash just dump. Look oh, yeah, at it, it took dump, guys. A huge what a trash dump coin. <laughs> It took a the beating while we started after we started the call, <laughs> and you somebody down here is very happy that they got their transaction down yeah, there. So, absolutely. Yep. So this is the order book, pretty straightforward. If I clicked on an offer, it's going to kind of auto populate the transaction ticket. There's your bids, charting, time and sales, trade history, I should say, and then working orders and executed orders would be down here. Just jump back yeah. into. So we already walked through there. Also, which is a little bit unique to us too, we've actually created algos. So if somebody's interested in doing pegging on the platform where they want an order to, to, you know, to move up and down with an offset, they can set that into the platform as well. Just additional screens that if you're on the mobile device, this is the view that you would see for executing trades. It's a mirror image of what would, you would see. I don't know if I would spend a whole lot of time trying to convince the, the hexagons how great your trading platform is because... We're not traders by nature. We are hodlers and stakers by nature. So. Oh, listen, I I would say I'm going to stop sharing at this point. Can you turn turn off? Yeah, you betcha. Yeah, perfect. I would say that we're not trading front end, you know, experts ourselves. This is just a tool for those people to get in and execute their orders. You know, to be very honest with you, we've taken an intermediary approach, and what does that mean? That means that I would rather lean on an Ameritrade, a Fidelity, or somebody else to be able to execute the orders because they're going to have the customer service, they're going to have the tools, they're going to have the infrastructure to support it. To be very honest with you, who would have ever thought that Schwab would be acquiring Ameritrade last year? Who would have ever thought that E-Trade would be moving over to Morgan Stanley? And I think that what's great about the team that we have here is we're actually able to pivot. How do we pivot? We created a trading UI, a quick trade widget, and that basically opened up access to the IRA community, opened up access to the direct members and retail participants. Just another you know angle or avenue for them to be able to trade on Arizona. I like that. Quite honestly, most hexagons are going to be wanting your spot USDC. <laughs> That's really where most. <laughs> but I'm curious, at, from an exchange point of view, where is the profit model for that? Since it's a, a no fee in or out with USDC. USDC is not, but for the other coins right now, we've mentioned if you're trading in your IRA, it's a 50 basis point charge. If you mm -hmm. decide to come direct. It's a 10 basis charge, char, 10 basis point charge for actually for removing liquidity. And then what's great is if your community is interested in posting liquidity, I'm actually going to rebate you one basis point in those transactions. They're, I mean, how often do you go to an exchange that's actually going to pay you to trade? So